Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is Monday night, it is 9 o'clock, and it is time for 10-Year Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the mod master that is Mark. This week, um, I'm getting to, uh, to grips. Um, most definitely, it was it was gripping. I can tell you that. Getting to grips with uh, with the Vamo. Um, Going to be uh, dissecting and uh, and having a look at one of those. And uh, we have a bit of a, a surprise mod from Mark this week. Um, we may well. Uh, I don't know if we should run a competition. See if you can guess what it is before we play the last video. Um, bit of interaction. Um, I'm sure we can think of something. I'm sure we will. We'll do that actually. We're going to run a little competition. Let's uh, let's play this week um, for for the viewers in chat. If you're watching this on a replay, you missed it. You should have been here live. Um, but obviously, we love your viewing figures. Um, yes. So this week, if you can guess the mod that Mark is making before the end, the last video, I'll sort you out with a prize. Um, so there we go. Nice bit of interaction for the chat tonight. I must say, I am uh, a little bit a uh, little bit steaming today. Um, and have been. I've been watching all the goings on, obviously, uh, previous shows, um, and I come across something that was posted up on, on Facebook tonight, which which is, I believe, the right stuff are going to be uh, doing a show about vaping um, tomorrow night on Channel 5 at 9.15. No doubt, over the coming week, that will be dissected and digested by our very own Mr. Dorm. Um, I'm very sure he will. Um, you may kill me for saying that, I don't know. Uh, but the, the, there's a little thread going on Facebook, and some of the comments in there were, were making my ears steam. Um, so get yourself over there. Uh, have a look. Not now, obviously. From 10 o'clock, you can go over there. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, some of the comments. They, 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 these people need educating. I'm hoping that the makers of that show do actually uh, take, take some... Uh, they do actually look at their Facebook page and we'll take some of those comments on board and we'll actually do something with them. Uh, obviously, we will see later on in this week whether any of those did actually hit a note um, and they did actually listen or read or look. But I'm sure it's had so many hits. Uh, I think we should keep them going, personally. Let's, let's bombard the buggers um, and see where we go. If they listen, might be a little one-up. You know what I mean? <laughs> see, who could resist that? many people <laughs> I'm not drinking honestly um, on with the modding tonight and uh, as I say I've been I was donated a, um, a Vamo uh, and uh, I'm gonna start getting to grips with that and as I say competition if you can actually guess what Mark is making before I play the last video in, um, I'll sort you out a nice little prize um, don't know what it'll be but it'll be something all right I'll catch you back very shortly after these right so this week we finally get a chance to uh, to look at one of these bad boys. I know why I showed you um, <coughs> last week uh, this had arrived. Um, I do have uh, do have my my other version, um, which is a stainless steel, um, and and the one that we're going to be looking at dissecting is is a chrome version. Um, this one here is is obviously seen uh, seen better days. However. It is, uh, it is still working. Um, all this stuff still does, and you know, we did say this was a version one, which doesn't have the bestest spring in the world in there. Um, but you know, this this still hits. It still works. And they're very good. Um, so we're going to look at, at potentially taking this apart. And there is a, a couple of things we will need, and that's probably going to roll. Um, no, it didn't. So a couple of things we're going to need to take this apart. One's going to be, um, uh, we're going to use a, a bit of an old old tea towel. Um, now this one here I use for, for cleaning epoxy. Um, and we're going to need, uh, to start with, our set of stunt wrenches. And we are also going to need our, our fine nose pliers. Um, both of which we talked about last week in the uh, in the tool section. Um, so our first stage when we're starting to strip this thing apart is going to be to remove our, our tank or our car tow or anything like that that we've got attached and obviously for safety reasons we are going to remove our little spring in there. Now it might be a, a good point here, let me see if I can get down on this. 
now I'm still working out my zoom so you might have to bear with me a little bit here um, there's the if you like the the original spring and you can see in there this one is is flopping around it's all over the shot it's as springy as anything compared to uh, to the V2 um, which is just removing from the other one which has a much nicer data spring in there as we can see fantastic now if the focus and everything is, is all over the shot today uh, it is because uh, you may have noticed from the sheer brilliance of the quality that we're putting out tonight I've got a new camera um, and uh, yes thank you very much so we're going to start stripping it and uh, I'm going to pop away for two I'll pop back I'll, I'll just flex some some muscles and uh, and get the stuff ready I'll pop back in two I'll see you after this okay so we're going to start trying to uh, to take this um, this thing apart and uh, to be honest this isn't in the best condition and and a few of you have sort of said can we have a look at potentially uh, taking one apart without damage now I'm and I, I tell you why I'm not going to be able to do that um, is is because of the the way that, uh, that my pliers are I would these these are um, particularly nut shaped um, and and they're very good at getting uh, grip on nuts however when you're trying to grip something round with these particular ones they are not the bestest ones in the world to be doing that with um, I know I raved about these last week but as you can see uh, I think I'm going to get some sort of damage down in there um, even if I uh, even if I try um, so I'm going to protect it um, but I doubt whether I'm going to get it off a damaged list shall we say um, what I'm going to do is, is just you would normally wrap something around the mod now the, the problem is I, I've, I've got a feeling I'm going to get quite a bit of, uh, of slippage um, particularly with this now I'm just putting a bit of uh, like tissue around the end of it just so I can sort of semi grip grip the end um, but it's, it's going to be quite difficult with these because they are um, used predominantly for gripping nuts and this is something round and, and they're working outside of, of realistically what they should be doing so I'm just going to grip that tight and I'm just going to start and I can already feel that slipping like a bugger in there I'm just going to start easing and the whole thing rattling about and I knew that was going to slip so what I might have to do, just so I don't take a chunk out of my hand, <laughs> is, is try and do it this way. And you can see with these what I'm what I'm at, um, because these are, are literally going to slip off the end, if you know what I mean. Um, so I may have to put go back to the drawing board. Now whether I can get a good grip on these in here at some stage, I don't know. I may have to abandon this and go and find something else to do it with. But what I'm doing is just rocking that backwards and forwards in there. And yeah, I am buggering the top of this. But I need to get the grip. I'm not going to risk uh, taking a chunk out of my hand, so you look and laugh at me. This is in there surprisingly well, believe it or not. <sighs> going to have to go off the bench. Two ticks. absolute bugger to get out of this thing at the moment it's well in there let me put it that way and I am mullering the top um, without oh <laughs> look that bit comes in half um, it's this bit we want off so what I might do is go away and bang that back together so I've got some leverage um, not push back together well, that's quite easy let's try again Nothing like a planned show, is there? I just cannot get the grip with these. If you have a look at what I'm gripping with there, because these are so out of line to deal with nuts, these are not the ideal tool for this um, at all. Um, lots of slippage. That's why I've, I've taken it off off these. It's an absolute bugger to get out should come out easier than this what I might do let me go and see if I can find something a bit more suitable I'll come back into so this week I'm going to do something a bit different 
Uh, so I'm not going to need any of this. Or uh, these. Or even these for this. Instead, what I'm going to be using is one of these. Maybe some of this. And these. Tools. Mostly going to be this. With a cutting disc and a sanding disc. Maybe one of these. And some spray paint. But you won't see me using that. So, I'm not going to tell you what I'm making, but I'll see if you can work it out by the end. So, don't need that part, but I will be using that at some future date, I think, for something. I've got a screwdriver set with bits. Won't need that. This is what I'm going to be using. And make something out of this. So, let's we'll just get to it. First job I need to do is cut around this edge flat with this section so I can get this top part off. It's the top part I need. So, I'm the drivel with the reinforced cutting disc. This shouldn't take long at all, hopefully. Put this as close and as flat as possible to this. Maintain as much of this as possible and give a nice flat edge. As much as I can. when you use anything like this, make sure you wear some sort of eye protection because you're going to get bits of plastic or bits of disc flying off this thing at very high speed and quite often heading towards your face. So, don't need this bit, that can go away. You're finished with for now. And it'll fit on. So now what we're left with is this. And I need to get rid of this part which sticks out. So I want to cut it flat all the way across this edge as before. So I'm afraid it's back with this. This edge that I've cut as a guide, so hopefully there won't be too much work to do once so I'm finished. Cutting.
Now one of the unfortunate things about using something like this is the plastic tends to melt back together after you've cut it, so you kind of have to go a few times around. So again we've got another piece which might come in useful for something later on, I don't know. So basically all you need to do now is get rid of all these bits of plastic that you've cut off and you'll end up with a quite a flat surface. Maybe we need a little bit of sanding down flat, but we shall see. So, a lot of the time you can just pick these off and then just take your Stanley knife, sorry, your tilty knife, I should say, and just very carefully run it around the edge and knock off all the bits. Just to clean it all up nicely. Because you're going to want to need to get inside here shortly. I'll show you that when I'm done. And there we go, we are back in the room. Now I can, I can sort of tell you that uh, we do have a couple of correct answers in there. I, I was very observant watching chat and uh, and I do have a winner, but I'm not going to tell you that is yet until the end of the show. Um, it is time for our first little web break, so uh, I will see you back very shortly after this. He says, if he can get the button right. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And yes, uh, it is, no it's not, I was going to say it is actually going to be a, a plastic Genesis with a, uh, a 50 mil tank, um, but it's not. Um, somebody did actually guess uh, correctly in chat, um, very early on will I say, uh, what that is that Mark is making. Um, I'm not going to tell you, uh, but there is a prize up for grabs. Um, you, can, you can still, feel free to guess if you want, yeah, have fun, chat amongst yourselves. Um, this week, as I say, I'm, I'm dissecting the Vamo. Um, I've yet to sort of um, put together a, a case for this to go in. I am undecided. I'm still looking this week. Um, I may actually uh, attempt to make something out of wood, um, which oh, I don't know whether I want to take on or not. But I may do. I may get a chunk of wood. Um, I've got a tree trunk um, in there that's been drying for four years. It's a cherry tree trunk, and I may, I may do something with it. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. I'm sure all, all we yeah, will become uh, clear um, by the time I, I sit down and film the next show uh, this Saturday. Uh, but moving onwards, uh, and yes, I am, I am, uh, I'm having a bit of tool problem, um, and problems getting the top cap off. Um, let's see how that carries on. Okay, this was supposed to be easy, um, but what I've done, I bought out the uh, the big boys, 
um, the uh, if you like the big, and you can see I've got a much 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 better grip on uh, on that end there uh, to get this off. Problem I've got is um, where this is actually uh, sort of given way now. I'm really struggling to get a grip on this because as soon as I put any pressure on here, my end bit's coming off. So I'm, I'm not getting you know the the leverage I need on there. So. It's, it's becoming an absolute mare and, and when this come in the post um, this mod uh, was in two halves so I assume that the, you know this this is this is sort of come off somewhere before um, but uh, yes Grumple Stiltskin uh, from the UK Vapors Forum has donated the, the mod for the purpose of this video I'm gonna go away I'm gonna grunt I'm gonna scream I'm gonna try and pull this top off um, as I say normally you wouldn't I would hope you wouldn't have this problem um, but it is, it's a pain because that is so loose I've got no leverage at all on there and I don't want to ram something up inside it to damage the board so I'm going to go away I'm going to see if I can get this top off um, as I say you should be able to do this without damaging it but I think it's probably because the, the, the stress point here where I'm trying to put a lot of, a lot of leverage on is just gone there's, there's nothing there at all um, you know, to, to, to get a grip on um, but yes if you didn't want to damage your, your top this is where you'd put a uh, coating on. Now I'm not really half asked about that purely because um, we're going to be putting this in another body anyway so it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. Um, I'll be back in two probably sweating and swearing. Well, as you can see with, with a little huffing and puffing and panting and yeah, well, that was a little that was a bugger to get off. It was an absolute nightmare to get off. But I do have my uh, my board out now. I've I've taken off and I've cut off the uh, the the top cap, um, the wire that goes to the pos, because I, I don't need that. Now, effectively, down inside here there is a little uh, sort of a plastic insert that that holds the board in. Now, what we've got to do is is get our get our pliers just all our little side snips just down inside there we've got to be ever so gentle when we do this um, just gradually wiggle your board around and sort of pull it ever so slightly and that will come out it's not like the uh, not like the other um, type of boards that uh, the glued in our button should just pop out the inside there as well and our little screen so there's, there's all our bits that have come out inside and, and there's our, uh, our VAMO end with a little insulating ring down inside there. Now, if you did manage to get your top off without damaging it by wrapping it and using the correct tooling, um, you could effectively, you know, here do what you wanted to do and pop it back back in. Um, look at your buttons, this, that and the other or whatever. But this, this board, in terms of um, looks wise, is, is quite actually... Let's just see. I'll bring that to you rather than me trying to zoom down. That's in damn good nick. Um, you can see on the back of here we've got our little protective cap which keeps all this away from the metal tube. We can ditch that out of the way and we can see our, our board sandwiched in there like so. Now we are going to be playing with this a little bit and, and doing some testing before we uh, before we go ahead and, and do some modding. Um, but you know they are relatively it's gonna, they are relatively easy to come apart he says um, and everything I know we can see on the top there everything is is pretty much marked out you know so you've got your in and your, your out on on your board up there so uh, not too bad at all you're out your pos pos and minus so these these middle two pins will be going out to your atty um, I say I broke one off during the process of taking the cap off but uh, they're very well marked up and, and you'll definitely be able to see what you are doing there Obviously this one here will be taking our, our POS feed um, from our battery um, and uh, we'll be probably getting a neg feed I'd imagine from, uh, from, from this one here which also goes up to our ATI. Um, so we'll have to have a look at that, not 100% sure but I would be assuming considering there are no, no other um, earthing points on this board the only bit of this which is actually touching, uh, touching any earth is, is this one. Um, which would be going up to our outer pin just here that's soldered onto which is again is attached to the body you can see how I mullered that I bloody banged the hell out of that to get off so it's, you know, 
I had to damn bang the hanger uh, to get it off. But yeah, it was an absolute pain in the bum. Um, and, and it was because, I think, mainly because the, the tube um, that I had, um, obviously I couldn't get any leverage because cause this end that was joining had come off. I didn't have anything to get hold of. So I had to put one end in a vice and mill the hell out of it to get it out. Um, so if you were looking to see a video of, uh, of getting a board out without damaging your tube, um, we can call that a fail. But what I'm going to be doing is is looking at um, realistically. Uh, I want to mount this in a box, but I don't necessarily want to use the switches that are on the board. I want to take the switches away from the board, um, and there is a a very simple way of doing that. And uh, we'll show you when we come back after this. So at this point. <coughs> And you've cleaned off all the edge, it's still a bit rough. And I have to say, if you've figured out what's going on here, one of two things has probably happened. Either you were at the news meet on Saturday and saw some of these, or you've been in a hangout and seen me coming up with the idea. But you will all be revealed shortly. So, we need to get a flat surface. So, we're we'll starting with a coarse sandpaper. A flat surface. Just a bit of sand away. And hopefully, if you've managed to cut flat, there shouldn't be too much to sand off. Just a little bit on the edge, I think. You just want to get a nice, basically a flat surface here, because you're going to be putting something on here later on. So, I think that'll do. And then, just need to move on to a finer paper, and do exactly the same thing again, just to get rid of any roughness. for the squeaking that sounds like something on a blackboard. Oh right, there you go. Just a very quick sand and you get nice and flat. Now next job you just need to clean all of this off, get rid of any dust. Because I'm gonna fill this with some epoxy. So once again I just want to take a knife just gently run it around the edges just to get rid of any bits that have overflowed onto here. I'm seeing you want to fill it with epoxy. So I'll show you back in a couple of seconds when I've got rid of everything from inside of here and ready to continue. So the next job, once you've got, over, got rid of all the dust and everything, is to mix the epoxy. Now because this stuff sets so quickly, as Gary's ably proved before, you only want to mix up about enough to fill halfway up this for the first lot. So I'll just mix up a batch, which will probably be the entire colours of what I've got left in here. Indeed it is. And just very quickly mix it all together. You pretty much know when you mix because it goes slightly white. Side. 
this one and it, if not possible, will just flow down into it. I don't worry about too much about how it goes. Could probably do another bit more for that batch. But it will do for now. And just quickly clean off any surfaces. Because you don't want it getting on the top of here very much. Otherwise you have to remove it later. So just let it sit there and get a bit set before you start on the next batch. Cleaning off your tools as you go of course. So it's had its chance to set and what I should have mentioned is there's another reason for me doing it halfway up. And that's if you put too much epoxy into something like this, there's a chance it's not going to set properly and it also gets rather hot. There's a chance, small chance, that you're going to deform the plastic. So do it in stages. It makes life a lot easier. So, a fresh tube. And just mix up an even batch. as before. Just very quickly mix it. And as quickly as possible you need to get it into the thing you're working on. got a certain amount where it's really runny and for something like this that's what you want to try and get it all in in time once it starts right so we've got our board in the uh, in the grippy vice um, and there are a few things that I want to try on this board um, prior to, to to looking at putting something back together again uh, one of which is, is just to prove my, my theory of earlier that this wire here which is in fact the negative wire from, from the atomizer is one that's going to uh, be earthing against the body of the mod and therefore I can actually attach a, an earth to the mod from this point um, because unlike the lava boards that normally have an earthing strip somewhere round about here on the side then earth to the body of the mod I'm, I'm assuming this is, is the way that this earths um, other people may have looked at this before and come to the same conclusions. I don't know. I've, it's the first time I've actually played with one. So what I do have is a, a small uh, 14500 battery pack that I've just rigged up to, to, to use a battery on. Um, and I'm just going to solder that in place um, on this board uh, just to prove out my, my power points. Now, I pretty much know that my, my pause is most definitely... I'm um, going to be going down here, so I'm just going to tack that onto the top there very, very quickly, um, and it may well fall off. I'm just, I'm just doing this very, very quickly to uh, to just test this out. And I've soldered a uh, a neg lead on my uh, on my ATI connection up here. So I'm just going to pop a battery in this holder, and hopefully, yep, yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's flashed away. Now I should be able to hit this five-click button. Turn the mod on, um, as we'd expect to see, and uh, if it's remembered it settings, it should be in wattage mode. So, yep, there we go. That's in wattage mode completely. So up to six watts. All good stuff. So we know our, our little uh, the, the power is is working. I'm just going to remove the battery from there. Um, and what I'm going to do, because I want to put uh, external switching on this board. Um, it's very easy, as we did with the uh, with the DNA board. Um, it'd be very easy to to actually add additional switches. 
Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to set the fluke to, if you like, the beep test. So, I've got my beeps. Um, and normally on, on this, type of, uh, this type of switch here, it would be the two pins across the side that, that would give the contact. So, I'm just going to tap on some two, two pins here and just hit this button. Now, I'm not touching properly, but there you go. And I would assume two pins to the other side are going to do exactly the same. But going across the top two is just going to give me a dead short. Going across the bottom two is also going to give me a dead short. And if I go diagonal, I will also get a, uh, a fix. So it's, it's weird. You can go across the diagonal on these, like we have there. As soon as you touch two on the bottom, get short. Two on the top, get short. Two on the side is probably your best bet. That's where I'd normally go. So what that means, essentially, is is we can, we should be able to put a, a couple of dabs of solder just down in the side there. So just bear me one second while I uh, while I get down here and and just try and put a couple of dabs of solder on on these pins that are already there. And I've got a, if you like, a pre-wired uh, little switch here that I'm just going to solder across those those two bits that I've made there. So there's one on. Let me just get the other one on. If you can hear the dog in the background, it's going to die very shortly. It's a neighbour's dog, and I'm going to kill it. Um, so yeah, I've got my, my little switch there, now externally. Now just to sort of test that theory, if I was to put... Uh, battery back in. Um, I'm in off mode effectively and if I press this switch five times I've brought my mod back to life. So it goes to show you can mount um, an external switch uh, in there and just to take that back up there's my external switch and to turn that off again I can do the five turn it off wait for it to go off Doom of five and bring that on. So we, we're in a very good position where we could also take um, the same scenario off these uh, off these little sort of two pins for the up and down. So you don't, you're not then in a position where if you want to mod this into to a particular, uh, you know, particular box, you're not in a position where where you would have to um, mount or drill two holes for these switches. It's quite fine soldering to get down in there and to get external switches off there but well worthwhile I'd say so we've again um, and I always do this I'm a sucker for doing it proving the mod outside of the box first getting a look at it having a play with it working out where it's going to go and working out what the possibilities are before you go ahead and mod you know mod it into something now theoretically I could do something like this like I did with the uh, with with the DNA board so I could literally just have a display and two external buttons. Now those buttons could be anywhere I wanted them to be because I can take feeds off of these. Um, and again, my power switch can be anywhere I want it to be. This doesn't have to, to be in, in the, the smiley face scenario as I call it. So I'm going to pop away and, uh, and we'll have a look at uh, potentially what we're going to do with this and I'll pop back into. And there we go. Uh, with all that said, I'm looking down at the clock and things are moving rather rapidly tonight. So I'm going to run into our second little ad break. I will see you back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Dirty Flights sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. We are back again in the room. Um, yes. So for those of you that have been uh, that have been that are live with us tonight um, and and that are watching, um, this is the part where we actually find out uh, what the uh, well, somebody. Yeah, I'm not going to mention what somebody was calling it. I could see that being the case if it was Homer Simpson. Um, sorry, that was purely a chat thing. Um, yes. Let's get on with it, and uh, and let's get the uh, the competition decided. I do have a winner written down. Um, not sure what you're going to get, but uh, you will get something. Something from my table. I shall reach out and grab something. Uh, I'll pop back very shortly after the final part of uh, of Mark's mod. Once it starts to thicken up, you're going to have problems. Oh, this it really doesn't take very long at all for it to start thickening, th thickening, thickening. Oh. Watch for air bubbles. I find air trapped in them. Just try pushing up and down a bit. And just shock it, it felt. Hairs in, of course. Mostly, what we're doing this for in this ear adds a bit of strength, but in this case in particular, I want to fill it all the way up to add weight because this particular object needs to be weighted down. And we'll see why shortly. So I'll just continue like that until you put it all the way to the top. And I'll then do it in two parts or three parts to tell you be you. Just keep it as small batches and keep doing that. And wait for it to set. So now the hey, it's all dried now, epoxy nice and solid. I've just given a quick sand across it just to again flatten off the edge of it. Now you should be able to work out what I'm going to do with it. It's going to go with this EVIC. Because the EVIC doesn't stand up very well on its own, especially not with a Genesis side out and on top. It's a little bit top heavy, so that's going to sit in there and make it a lot more stable. But what I'm going to need to do is sand out the base a bit, because it doesn't quite fit in there properly yet. So I need to sand out the inside of here just a little bit, so that it'll go in better. So, with the little sanding drum. It's just a matter of running this around the inside. And what you want to do is just Sand it off enough so that this will fit in all the way to the bottom, but only just some, something like that. I want it to grip it tightly because when you're done, yellow everywhere, it's going to become something more like that with or without the ring. In fact, I'm going to say without the ring, it's a bit tight on that. It'll pop into there. And then it's just about there. Once it's popped in, you can then 
unscrew the cap with it in place to change the battery because it can be difficult to change without it. So you can pop that in there. Change the battery. Screw it back on. Oh, there you go. That's pretty stable. Yeah, so you can add the extra ring if you want. Which is that ring that comes with all the bits. You can even leave the bits in if you prefer to make extra weight. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So that's fully sanded now. We just need to clean off and then we're back. So I've cleaned away all the dust pretty much. Now I need something to put on the base of this. And what I've got is some of these surface protector pads. These round ones just happen to be the exact right size to stick straight under the base. Like so. And basically there you have something you can use. It makes it nice and stable, it won't slide around and it helps it stand up. Now, yeah, so you can add the ring if you want and you can paint it. But I'm going to use the car paint, spray paint and just paint it black. Uh, but if you're going to do that you probably want to cover this with some masking tape before you do. Because you want it to be you don't want that to be smooth otherwise it's not going to grip under the table. So just give that a good masking. Spray it, a few coats of the black spray paint and you're done. You can have some like that, which will definitely not fall over. Uh, something else I'd tell you. Oh yeah. One other thing, you might want to put a hole through the base of this, because otherwise it can cause a vacuum in here because it's quite a tight fit and make it difficult to pull it in there. So just put a little bit of air hole through there and you sort it. That'll do for now. So there we go. It was in fact a uh, a mod holder. Um, so I, I was very closely monitoring in the chat uh, as soon as we announced that and I think it was probably one of the second or third suggestions that come through. Uh, and it was from FMRL and he he was the first to uh, say it was a mod holder um, and I rummaged around on the desk and uh, and I've, I found this thing which I made in a previous show which is a, a little mod thing for putting a tank thing in and takes an 18350 battery I'll send that to you um, just a little bit of fun on a Monday night uh, I'm gonna get uh, in in a minute to uh, to my next bit or, or the final bit of of the uh, of the Vamo board now I'm I'm looking for suggestions uh, for what I should house it in, um, and I'm not looking for you know suggestions like uh, stick it in your nan's old vase um, and call it a bobo um, because that's been done. Uh, but any any decent suggestions you've got uh, that you you know you'd like me to put it if you want me to make some wood I'll, I'll I'll actually try and do another solid block of wood but I don't want to if I don't have to. Um, let me play this little bit first and I'll pop back while you guys have a think about it. If you do, uh, if you do have an idea, pop along, uh, put it on the forum, um, our Vapor Trails forum or, uh, or contact me through any of the other forums and let me know what you think the Vamo should go in. Um, pop back very shortly after this. And we're back. And I thought, <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog tonight. Um, I've just swallowed the dog from next door that uh, decides to uh, come out and try and mount foxes, uh, attack foxes every night. Um, but moving on, um, I thought it would be rude not to, to show you uh, essentially you know, how one of these little switches wired up would work if we were to solder a, uh, an external switch, uh, which is sort of what I plan to do with this mod. Now, the, the case itself is yet decided. Um, I've got a couple of, of things that I've looked at and there are most definite possibilities um, but I still don't know 100% what I'm going to put it into. Um, I, I, this section was about getting it 
apart um, and that may have been badly um, but that was down to tools which sort of reflects on what we were talking about last week having the right tools to do the right job um, and today I didn't now I've got uh, a little bit I've, I've already uh, pre tinned up and metered out one of these switches that I, I talked to you about and I've got a little external switch um, that I'm just gonna go on now now when you're putting these on um, you have to excuse the focus because I'm down as low as I can go here you only want to tin uh, the very tip of your soldering iron and, and that is where you want the solder to be um, and these little tiny wires I'm just going to drop down in and literally touch the tips just with the tip of your iron on the outer two pins of, of that there now I'm just going to take this camera up ever so slightly so we can see what we're doing and you can see that I've, uh, I've wired up this, uh, this red switch here to one of the terminals. Um, and I believe that may be the, the down terminal. So, go back again. if I uh, put my battery in, I've got my flashy on. I've got my black switch here that if I press five times, that's now on. And uh, you should be able to see now if I press this switch here, I've gone down, I'm at 14.5 and I'm counting down because I'm in the down position. So I'm counting down my watts from an external switch. And go down to 3 and we should go right the way around again to 15. So effectively, you know, the external switches, it does mean if you're very, very careful, you can remove these. If you don't want it to interrupt these, you can you can remove these switches from the equation completely or if you didn't want to remove them completely you could effectively just drop a bit of super glue down in the top of those and it would stop them pressing um, if you were mounting that up flush against something um, but yeah that works and the other one will turn the board off so all well and good I thought it'd be worth as well just pointing out um, the, the spoils of, of the mod shall we say um, you know, we, we've, we've got all the various bits and, of tubes and, and bits and pieces sort of left over. Now, this is, uh, if you like, the, the midsection of the tube. Um, and at this moment in time, I've taken out the, uh, the spring. Now, this would be uh, an ideal thing for, for those of you who are, if you like, trying to work out how to, um, to, to put something in a pipe. Um, I'm sort of thinking that I may have a go at a pipe. Um, I've got this bit here actually fits uh, an 18500 battery quite comfortably, shall we say. Um, and this would be ideal to actually insert and mount down inside a pipe. Um, you could tie up this top end here and you could also mount a, uh, a push button switch into this. Now, if you would have that mounted down, um, you know, with your switch on there, drill down, earth your switch against the body like we talked about a couple of times before, you know, screw this cap on, that can sit slightly proud of the, uh, of the pipe, Thump, you've got a very easy way of, uh, of making a nice little pipe mod. So we might have a go at one of those, um, using the spools from the, uh, from the tube. Um, and that would it. go down inside glue and you've got a nice little body that you can earth against this that, and the other a nice little contact point for your switch and, and all that sort of stuff um, so the bits left over fantastic stuff um, and again Grumple Stiltskin um, was the provider of, of this mod um, and it is on the proviso that uh, I, I put a plea out and said look if you you know anybody wants to bear my modding um, it doesn't work properly we'll have a look and, uh, and you can keep the mod afterwards um, and that offer is, is open to, to all of you guys if it's something that we haven't done. Um, even if you if you wanted to, you know, buy a board, you know, that, that you want modding and we haven't done it on the show, um, send it to us and, and we'll mod it for you. Um, and as long as we can film it and get a show of it, you know, show out of it, happy days. Um, so yeah, the spoils will be used in, in something. Now, I do have a, a cherry tree trunk that was cut out of our garden um, that was basically planted in memory of my wife's granddad and uh, I promised to get something done with that for the family um, which I'm going to do but there are some little offcuts of that uh, that you know a nice bit of cherry that I may well attempt to do a pipe um, from scratch 
which is probably dangerous, but it may be worthwhile. <laughs> With all that said, I need to, to now go away and, and find a, a suitable case um, for, for this thing here. Um, and uh, I'm sure I'll be continuing the saga next week. I hope I don't have to build it myself, uh, but we'll see. Uh, back to me in the studio. And there we are again. This week has gone extremely fast. Uh, don't forget, this week, tomorrow night, is, is Vapor Scene. Uh, Wednesday night, we have uh, VTTV Talk. Uh, we have the Haze Hour on Thursday. On Friday, we all have a day off. Saturday, we have uh, SOS with Andy Sutton. And on, f on Sunday, he's forgetting the days of the week. On Sunday, we have Dave and his Tackle Box. Now, I have mentioned a few times in there, I am, I am looking um, I'm looking for, for some inspiration, shall we say. So if you do want to pop over to the Vapor Trails forum and, uh, and give me some inspiration uh, of what I should be putting that in, I don't want to stick it in a tin. Um, I think I've done tins to death, to be honest with you, as, as most people have. Um, I, I, I'm, toying, I'm toying with the idea of, uh, of, of trying to make a, uh, a, a box from scratch. Um, but time may be, may be a, uh, a, a contributing factor in there because I think I've got a couple of weeks left and I've also, I'm going away on, on April Fool's Day. I hope she wasn't joking. Um, so I won't be here for that, but I'm going to try and get something recorded for you and continue the, the series, which means I've got to work twice as hard. Um, but yeah, if, if you've got any suggestions that you would like to see that go into, um, let me know. If it's homemade wood, I will most certainly try. Uh, fade in there, I'll buy a wooden box. Um, and put it in there. It's probably going to be a damn sight less painful. Um, I did mention in there that the, the little tube that was left over would most definitely work in a pipe. Um, and and after filming that, I've, I've sort of decided I am going to uh, to take a chunk off the off the cherry uh, the cherry trunk, and most definitely at some point in the very near future, have a go at making a, a pipe from from a trunk. Um, not sure how that's going to go. Uh, I need to have a look around and, and, and read some threads on the forums to see, uh, to see I've never made a pipe before, apart from the pre-made ones. Making one from scratch, I, I, don't, just, I don't know what it's going to turn out like. But we will most certainly give it a go. Um, don't forget, keep your mod suggestions coming in. Um, some of them have been very good. And obviously the, uh, the, the VAMO is from a suggestion that was made on the forum. Um, we'll, we'll try and do our best uh, for you guys whenever we can. If there's anything you want to see on the shows, please let us know. With all that said, it has been emotional um, once again. I will see you back here next week um, for another episode. So take care, guys. Good night. Tip with Gary Dibley.